Hello and welcome back to Walk the Cinema Podcast. Today's episode, we will be talking about Wendy and Lucy. So Wendy and Lucy, um, I was a little bit surprised that this was an episode you wanted to do because I didn't really think there was a lot there. So I'm going to let you kind of run the episode this, this time. Well, if there's not a lot there, why would there be a lot in, like, nomad land, right? Sure, this is smaller scale by a lot, smaller budget by a lot, but it's a slice of life, kind of sweet, hopeful film. I ended up watching this for the first time because this is one of Bong Joon-ho's favorite films, and I was, you know, bored looking at lists on letterbox and i ended up picking this to watch and i really loved it so then i made you watch it with me again and i mean you kind of liked it i thought it was okay but i i guess i don't necessarily see the absolute value in it not that not value that's a bad way to phrase it but like Hmm. you get what i mean I guess. I mean, uh, okay. Let's first say what the movie's about. It's directed by Kelly Reichardt, the director of First Cow, which is a popular 24 movie. Late 2019, maybe early 2020. I don't remember when it came out anymore. But it stars Michelle Williams as Wendy and Lucy the dog as Lucy. Mm -hmm. And that's basically it. Those are the two characters. Yeah. Wendy's kind of a nomad, right? She's, She's, She's homeless, yeah. She's homeless, but she travels around, too, because you can be homeless and not travel around. But she's homeless out of her car. So she goes around with her dog, Lucy, and, well, she doesn't have money, so she goes into the shopping center thingy. I don't really know what that was. Was it, like, a gas station? No, it was a supermarket. It was? Yeah. Okay, it was, like, a small-town supermarket. So it was just a market. (laughs) She goes into the market and steals food for the dog. She gets caught, taken to jail, and, you know, Lucy gets left behind. And then the rest of the movie, she's trying to find Lucy. Yeah. And we see the people she interacts with along the way. The other homeless people selling cans and bottles yeah. to make money to eat. Uh, we see the um, security guard, which is like the sweetest person ever. That and then helps her a lot. And then we have the man, the the boy. I would rather say that basically gets Wendy arrested in the first place. Yeah, the grocery Christian man. Yeah, which I do think that they really played into the. He's got the Christian cross necklace on. They really focused on that. I think as he's being like, well, this woman's homeless and she's trying to steal. She deserves to go in jail. Like, that's our store policy. Even though I think that the store manager was kind of like, yeah, she tried to steal, but, like, I don't think it's, like, that big of a deal. We got the merchandise back. We should just Mm. let her go, like, be on her way. But Christian boy is, like, we gotta, we gotta crack down on this. There's a policy. Yeah. Which, I mean, I get it is the law, right? Mm Mm-hmm. But she's trying to feed her dog, so I kind of hate him. Yeah, and it's just like, you got you got the merchandise back. Like, I just... Even I if know. you didn't, it's not yours. You just work there. Yeah. But that's really neither here nor okay, there. Okay, that's fine. But I just thought it was interesting that, you know... Okay, I thought she really liked Nomadland. Let me show her Wendy and Lucy. Because I saw this before Nomadland. And... You didn't like it as much. But the correlations I have, like, the female director, not that that means anything, but like the main actress being the sole star of the movie, right? Mm-hmm. And we follow her in her nomad ways, not much of a story, more like loose treads. And Michelle Williams prepared for the role kind of in the same way where she lived off of her car for a while. She wasn't shaving or bathing maybe. Uh, Lucy the dog is actually the director's dog. So I feel like there's a lot of correlation between the two at a more spiritual level, I guess. Where they have the same vibes. 
coming off for me. Yeah. I mean, I feel like Nomadland just did it better. So maybe if I saw this before Nomadland, I would have liked it better. But I also think that, like, Nomadland has more of that sense of, like, goodness that Wendy and Lucy misses. Like, Wendy and Lucy is a story where I think everything's kind of just tragically happening to Lucy, or to to Wendy. But I still think it's very emotional, and it really pushes the emotions out of the movie for me, personally. I guess you didn't get that same feeling. I mean, it is emotional, but, like, it's it's emotional in a different way. I think it has better emotions. Well, I guess the emotions can be better than others, but I think it portrays emotion better than Nomadland. I, I disagree, though. Okay. I don't think that... Because you have... Nomadland is more about community and people coming together and helping each other out. Sure. And, you know... The sense of, like, this is who I am, this is who I want to be type thing. Whereas you never really get that with Wendy and Lucy, where I think, like, everything that's bad that can happen happens to Wendy. There's nothing really good that happens to Wendy. I don't think it's a tragedy type movie. But I... let, let's not compare it to Nomadland. This is not their episode. They got their own episode. We've made an episode. You, you can check it out. But... This is its own movie, right? Came out way before. Way lower budget. But I think they achieve everything the movie could. And that it really needed. Yeah, I guess. I was... I don't know. It really works for me, personally. I guess it is slow. Not everyone likes slow movies. And for me, sometimes other slow movies don't really work. But this one does. And you can't really put your finger on it. Yeah, I guess. I just feel like I was never going to like it as much as I liked No Bad Land. I know we said it's not the episode, but since that's the comparison you brought up. Like, I was never... That was my reasoning behind, I I guess, forcing you to watch this. I was never going to like it as much because, I don't know, I feel like... Watching this movie, I leave feeling worse than I did going into it, you know? Okay, sure. She, she... There's, there's pain. Yeah. There's a lot of misery, but I don't think it's misery porn, you know? I don't think they're exploiting... Because that was a criticism Nomadland got. Mm -hmm. And Chloe Zhao clearly was inspired by this. You can't deny that. No, I can't deny that, no. Because it's very obvious, but... I think there's hope and there's love and there's community. You know, the the security guard is like a super sweet old man that helps her in every way. Even the mechanics kind of try to help her as best as possible. Mm, I, she, I don't think she's as receptive to it. I don't know. I don't know. You tell me why you disagree. I mean, my thing with the mechanic is if he was really trying to help her, he wasn't the car was right out front and he was like, oh, we got it. That's $50 for tow. He's like, but I'll cut you a deal to be $30. Like, that's not helpful, especially when it's right outside the mechanic. Oh, those are rules. I remember when I lived in an apartment and there was a fixer upper guy across the street, literally. And he would charge like 30 bucks to cross the street and go up the building and look at whatever was broken. That's just a flat fee no matter what. I get it, but like, at the same time, it's like his business. You know? Exactly. But it's, it's his business. It's how he lives. Yeah, but it's like, I don't think that you can say that he was trying to help her out. You get rid of discount. You gave her a twenty dollar discount. I don't. I. I don't see how the mechanic in any way is trying to help her out. You're just, you could, You're just mad at the system. No, but you can say I could. I see where you're saying about the security guard. He does try to help her. Well, the security guard is very obviously helping her. He gains nothing from it. Yeah. At one point, he gives her all of his money, which was like a roll of quarters or something. It was like, like two dollars and something, and a roll of quarters maybe. So. 
Yeah, I mean, I get that, but, like, at the end, it's... She finds the dog, everyone. She does. <laughs> Lucy's fine. Yeah, she's better than before, I guess, is kind of the point. Yeah. It is a love story. It is a, if you love something, let it go. Let it, go. It, it is a love story. The whole movie is a love story between a woman and her dog. And we see a lot of homeless people that have dogs, and that's their whole life. And it's sweet. Yeah. And other people really hate that these homeless people have animals because they think they can't take care of them, which is the point of the shop boy. Because if you can't afford the food, you shouldn't have a dog. But dogs don't live off of just food. They're animals that care a lot about love. And yeah. she gave it all of it, her love. Yeah, it was like the the one thing in this world that kind of gave her happiness, you know? To an extent where, like, nothing else could give her happiness. She couldn't be happy until she found her dog. Yeah, she couldn't move on until she found her dog, you know? But, like, you know, every I, I do think that this is a kind of a tragic story. Because, like, at the beginning, Wendy had a car. She had Lucy. She, you know, was relatively safe. Okay. But then at the end, like, she doesn't have her car. She doesn't have Lucy. Because she decides that she, she would let Lucy be with the people. Yeah, she'd be better take, off. Take care of her. She'd have a yard. She'd have food. You know, she didn't want to have to be stuck in the car. And we have, like, the, the, the scenes where Wendy almost gets assaulted. Oh, yeah. But that's that's pretty common for homeless women. Yeah, it's tragic. That's a, that's a big problem in homeless communities as the homeless women get very mistreated and abused. And we almost see that happening. That was a pretty hard scene to watch. Yeah. Because she, she just didn't move. And she didn't make a noise. Yeah. She, like, heard them talking about her, but she was kind of frozen in fear. Or at least was trying to make herself seem as unassuming as possible, I, I think that might be one of the most underrated scenes in this. Because even I almost forgot it. And this is one of my favorite movies that I've seen in the past two three years even though this came out a while ago yeah it's hard and she pulls it pulls that scene off kind of a weird scene because he's portrayed as kind of a lunatic rambling homeless person and she's just shivering in fear but not moving not trying to run not trying to fight just frozen in place at a point where her life couldn't get any lower, she finds out that it might. Yeah. It's just kind of a sad situation. I don't know. It. I don't know. I feel like this movie doesn't make me feel good. It doesn't make me... I don't need a movie to make me feel good, but I do think there's a good message in this and there's good moments and... I don't know. I don't feel terrible. I mean, sure, she's not living a great life, but I don't know. Mm. She she ends up accepting what's happening. Yeah. We don't know what happens after it ends, right? Yeah. There's no decisive, happy ending, obviously. It's kind of left up to... In- kind of interpretation as as to what you think happens afterwards because she gets on a train to go see if she can find work somewhere yeah and that's the nomad life but i will say something that this movie has going for it is michelle williams because she's the only thing i think really carrying the movie she's, she's basically the only character in the whole movie yeah for most of it so if she did a bad job it'd be awful yeah. So the fact that people like it means that she did a good job automatically means that. There's no other way around it. Yeah. The directing and the acting have to be on point for this type of movie to work. Because if something's off, you're going to immediately notice it. Yeah. 
because there's nothing else happening on screen. There's no set design because they're filming in location. There's some makeup and hair. They actually make Michelle Williams look worse than what she does. <laughs> Not saying she looks bad, but you know, they, actually, they do the, make I her... think the director thought that she might have been too pretty for this role. I could see that, but. I mean, it works. I, I wasn't, like, the pretty girl would never be in the situation, so I guess it works. She has the terrible haircut. Well, I assume she cuts it herself. Probably. <laughs> I mean, I doubt that you're homeless and you have no money that you're You can gonna... ask someone else to do it. I mean, yeah. I'll... Hey, I'll cut your hair. If you ask me nicely. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. But yeah, I don't know this. I don't hate this movie. You make it sound like I don't like it and I hate it. But like, no, no, I don't think you hate it. I was just expecting more out of you. You let me down. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just what my heart wasn't in this one. I guess I don't know. I get it. I do understand that. I do understand people that don't like it. Actually, I think it's easier to understand people that don't like it than people that love it. Even though I love it. I think there's more going against it than for it. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it works. So, does it matter? No. Yeah. So, what did you rate this movie? Nine out of ten. Because it's just that good to me. Yeah. It's the same I gave Nomad Lion, so I'm there. I gave this one a seven out of ten, which... The way he thinks that I think about this movie, it should be way lower, but, you know, I don't know. I I do think it's good. I do think there are elements that really shine, Yeah. you know, but it's not something that I would consider, like, there's nothing for me that, that it has going for it that would make me consider it one of the greatest movies. I see that, but I don't respect it. You don't respect it. You can say you don't agree with it. You can say you respect it, I though. clearly don't agree with it. Okay, I respect it. Fine. But, yeah, I don't agree. I think it's great. Thank you, Director Bong, for the suggestion. Even though it wasn't a personal suggestion. <laughs> um, this is just a general suggestion. You just put it out there. Yeah, I loved it. You did it. And we'll see you next time.